So just breathe deeply and move into your heart space. Just breathe deeply, breathe deeply into the Dantian, two inches below the navel. In a very slow, relaxed, rhythmical, circular breathing. And move into that heart space and find that child again. And this time, the child is going to say something to you, and it may not be in this moment, but sometime during the channeling, they will speak to you. Just listen. And also know that it's a perfect time to let them know how grateful you are for them, how much you love them. You've created a sacred spot today Take this energy out with you, but first own it for yourself. Feel the love within your heart. The love of what you've done, learned, been, felt, seen, to be here now, the privilege it is to be in the earth body, and let the body know that. Know that whatever you hold as your truth will come to you. So magnetize to you that which you seek, not that which you fear. Let that go. Let the Shekinah fill you with compassion and love. And so it is. Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. There are those who have said, well, what does that mean? Exactly. Now, after all of these years, perhaps some of you know who I am, really. All the magnetic part, it's been accomplished. This is the service that I have for the planet. Oh, but there's so much more. I want to invite the entourage in. That the room would be gradually filled to a degree where you can feel it heat up. The legion of entities we call the entourage. It's different every time. Filled with those who know you filled with guides, filled with what you would call angelic entities standing around. 
the most esoteric thing we do besides the channeling itself is to suggest that this is a reunion a meeting place that is grand beyond belief and if each one of them could touch you personally it's possible because you allow that with your heart how 3D do you want to stay in this this time we have together There's only a few minutes we have together how 3D do you want to be it's a safe place it's safe it's safe to allow things to take place here it's safe for you to think things that perhaps you didn't allow yourself to think before how many humans will actually sit and ask themselves is there a reason I'm here Oh, not, not because you're in trouble, not because there's difficulty or challenge. It's, it's a blessed thing that the human, in joy and full celebration of life, can say, Is there a reason? Oh, I really like to know the reason. That's why crying is here. That's why this is channeling. That is why I came. <laughs> to give you these words one at a time. The channeling is one at a time for the life of my partner until he's no longer able to speak and say you are dearly loved that there's more to life than you think than there's tools in your DNA there's divinity there's a purpose there's a plan and you are sitting in a place where you can do something about it The entourage is almost settled here. Some of you will feel during this time of instruction, you'll feel impress upon you. Some of you who are seers will see the light that is here on the stage, will know that there is something going on. They'll see my partner more, if he always does for those who choose to see it. There's an interdimensional aspect going on. It's right now. I can't do this through him without him allowing a space and a time for it. I can't do this with him unless he becomes interdimensional for just a little while. I've told him that during this time he doesn't age. That's when he asked me to channel a lot. And so we do. The seers in the group will be able to verify, to see the morphing and the colors. It's always here, dear ones, because it reflects on the interdimensional side of those who are gifted in that way. And you know who you are, don't you? And even some of those of you who don't think you're gifted, you might look up once in a while and see if anything is changing here. As we get into these things, we start talking about the divinity of humanity. The lesson today is not a new one. It has been given one time before. Not in its entirety. Consider it a rehearsal for my partner so he could do this one correctly. <laughs> Three of you were there to hear it. But now it's going to be complete. For I add on to it so he knows what's coming. And he knows what's coming. It's a grand message. But it's a profound one, one that will be transcribed. And we're going to call it, what are you going to do with your filters? The premise that we have given all of these years is this, that the metaphor of the light worker is one who sends light. And the metaphor goes like this, that, that lighthouses are never built in safe places and that you are lighthouses. You walk among society all over the earth. There is a readership, a listenership, and a listening ship. <laughs> There's three groups of you right now and I see you all. So let me address the readers. This is a precious, precious time. You can either get this message or you, or you don't. But please, 
Give it a listen, give it a read. For the listenership, I will say to you, this is a direct message for you, for your two ears. I know who you are, listener. You don't think I do because I'm talking out of time here. To you, this is a recording. You don't know I'm on your lap, do you? Just like those here, right now. They know, they feel. Something's in the air, they feel the thickness as it closes in upon them. Perhaps even the third language is upon their lips as they celebrate divinity in the room, their own. It's a thick energy, isn't it? And some of you know, I can feel it changing. Oh, some of you are even asking, could this really be? Could it be real? A voice from the other side of the veil telling us these things. I tell you, look at the stage sometime and you'll see, is it real? Some of you may even see the beings that always accompany my partner during channel. They come and they stand next to him. They're big. He knows that he can feel them. They snuggle into him. And that's when the teaching begins, and it's always that way, and he, he seldom speaks of it. It's an anointment. And so the metaphor goes. You are challenged to send light. And it must be pure light, and it cannot have anything on it. And anything you put upon this light that is not divine becomes human and it's a filter that you put in front of it. Just like a lighthouse would, would perhaps put a filter over its light. Now there's no reason why it would ever do such a thing. But imagine just for a moment, just a whole box of filters. I'm going to identify what they are. The grand lighthouse. The light is as bright and as white as anything you have ever imagined in your life. And here comes the box of filters. And if you look carefully at the box, it's got a name on it, and it's your name. <laughs> the human shows up at the top of the lighthouse, decides what they're going to send in the light. And maybe you haven't thought about these things before, and I'm going to talk about the first one. You think you can divorce it, can't you? You can divorce the, the sending of the light from your life, and you can't. You cannot. Worry. Worry. What are you worried about? I know who's here. I know what you're worried about. And so many of you are. Worry. You know what that looks like? Oh, it's a great dark filter. You can put it right in front of that light. So when you sit down and meditate and you want to send light to the rest of this planet for peace on earth to the Sudanese, to the Israelis, to the Palestinians, you've got a light that's going to search out and it's going to go around and around. It's going to say, worry, 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 worry. Did you know that? It's a filter. It goes right on that line. Perhaps before you sit down and you meditate, you would like to clean yourself of all worry. And you would say, well, I can't, I don't know how to do that. I mean, that would be, I'd have to, I'd have to go to another space completely. I wouldn't be able to be me. Well, I've got a solution. Why don't you go into that ascension status that we have talked about so many times. Pull upon the energy of the DNA, which is yours, and eliminate the worry. Eliminate the filter. Tear up the filter. There's no reason for it to be on that lens anymore, worry. What about frustration? So many of you, you're frustrated over this and that. What am I going to do? Where am I going to go? What's happening next? Why did that happen to me? <laughs> frustrated. Do you know that frustration is a filter? When you looked into the eyes of the masters of the planet, whether they were called Christ or Buddha or Paramahansa Yogananda or Sai Baba, Baba Ji, when you look 
any of them. Look into their eyes. Do you see frustration? Do you see joy? Do you see peace? Oh, you see clarity and balance. And you say, well, those were masters. And if you said that, you haven't been listening to cry on very long, have you? What do you think's inside you, shaman? What do you think's inside you? It's called mastery. Mastery. You're going to be a frustrated master? He's a crying all the time. I'm frustrated. Because I have reason to be frustrated. I'm a human being and there are things that frustrate me. How'd you like to drop that? How'd you like to be a human being and have the same things there and they don't frustrate you? Is that a possibility? Maybe. If it is and you can see that, open your heart. Open that third eye for a moment. Welcome to mastery. Welcome to ascension. Are you getting it? You start pushing on that door and I'll tell you one of the things that happens is all these things drop from you. The light becomes pure, but otherwise you're going to send that light. Frustration. 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 I can just see it now. An angel on the other side of the earth saying, oh, there's a light worker now. He's sending light. Oh, it's frustration. <laughs> That's what it looks like. What about bias? Human bias, pure human bias. I'm crying, I'm not biased. All right, I challenge you. Gear up, meditate, and send light to your government seat without any bias. It's not what you want to say to the president. That's not what the angels want to hear. That's not what he wants to hear. That's not what you're supposed to be doing. What's the bias that you've got going on? Can you get above it? Can you send light without any idea of the cosmic intelligence that's going into it to shine a light into an area that the leadership needs? Can you do that? I'll tell you, most of you can't. Because you got by it. It's a filter. You slap it on the front of that light and out it goes. Well, how can we do that? If that's, if that's part of being a human, cryon, how can we tear that filter up? The one of bias. It just seems to come with the territory. We're built like we're built. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, you come in that way. And you go through life that way. And then along comes a message that says, how you like to change it? Do you remember the message of 1989? My partner released that message in 1993 for you. What was that message? That you could change your stripes. That was the message. How would you like to? How would you like to change your karmic attributes? I said to you, there's a new energy. Magnetics are being changed. You can be changed. How would you like to even not be affected by your astrological sign anymore? How would you like to do things in a retrograde nobody would do? I said that and you go back and look and what do you call a person who can do that master master mastery is at hand and it doesn't mean that you stand up tall and everybody worships you it doesn't mean that you have to make light shined upon you it means in the darkness even of your own closet that your light is so pure that it changes things on the planet and you know about it. Only you know about it. You don't have to shout it from the hilltop and nobody's going to come running to your door and say, wow, you got a bright light. You'll know it because you're going to feel peaceful and you're not going to have fear. You're not going to have worry. You're not going to have frustration. You're going to have the love of God in you. Oh, what a concept. Mastery is yours. That's what you say. Well, here's a filter that you haven't even thought of. What about things that have happened in your lifetime that have given you trouble? What about the one you can't forgive? You don't think I know who's here? Oh, you tried. But betrayal is a tough one. It is. It is. 
It's almost like they, they, be, they betrayed you. They betrayed the whole contract of why you were here. Put you through it, they did, didn't they? Maybe it was a mom or a dad. That even makes it worse, doesn't it? Yeah, I know who's here. Maybe it's a daughter or a son. You just can't forgive for what they did, you know. Maybe there's been abuse. Maybe it continues to happen. And you just cannot get through it. You don't think I know who's here? I'm talking to you now. That's why you came and sat in the chair. And if you don't feel touched now, you're not going to feel touched at all because I'm talking to you. Listener, I just touched one of you. <laughs> More than one. What do you do with that? You can't forgive them. It's a filter, you know. I can just see the angel on the hill now. Oh, there's a light. It's coming from thousands of miles away. Oh, it's beautiful light. Oh, I see that they can't forgive. Oh, we use as much of the light as we can, but it's going to be tough. We're going to have to work around that one. Do you see what I'm saying? Because whatever you've got going on in your life just sticks to the light. And up to this point, maybe you thought you could just go in a corner and send light, meditate, have a great time, then come back, re retreat, and in unforgiving way. All right, crying. You tell me how I'm going to forgive this person. You put it out on the table. I can't do it. I'm having trouble. How do you do it? Oh. Have you ever asked for help? Or do you sit there and think, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. What about a life change? So grand and so great that those feelings just fall on the floor and you sweep them away with time. How about that one? And you never think about it again instead of every moment of every day. How about that? Forgiveness? Oh, it's automatic. Because you start to see the scheme of the way things work. What the person is there for in your life. The sand and the oyster, you all have it. <laughs> oh, they may be in the family, they may be at work. You all have it. That's what humans do with each other. That's why you brought them into your own life. That's why they're family members, some of them. And you know what I'm talking about. Can you look at them? Can you forgive them? Can you even love them? I challenge you, dear one. Clean up the light. Make that happen today. I've just given you about four filters. Common to man. Common to all, various degrees. Have you ever thought about how that affects your ability to send out this purity that you want to send out? I know you do. Isn't it beautiful to think of a white light that is so bright that it will illuminate the corners of darkness worldwide? You know what lies on the floor that nobody can see, even amongst those who are so dense? <laughs> They will never come to a meeting like this. They will never read the words that some of you are reading now or hear this message that some of you are, are listening to. And I will tell you, that is the one that's going to be affected because this light of yours shines in their corner. And suddenly, they see things they never saw before. No, they'll think it's their idea. <laughs> You'll know better. Because it smacks of being wise and pure, brilliant. Solutions to problems that nobody has thought of ever. Coming from the leaders that you sent light to. What does that tell you? Pure, bright light without frustration, anger, fear, bias. Or unforgiveness. And if you thought this was difficult, to clear all those filters, wait until you hear the next section. There's another box over here. Oh, this is an esoteric box. It's got your name right on. It's over here. Got this box of filters over here and this box of filters over here. If these over here, these human ones were not bad enough, wait till you see the esoteric one. And they're labeled Akash. They're labeled Akash. Let me tell you something. You are a product of all the yous that have ever been on earth. Think of that for a moment, Laborian.
Who have you been? What have you done? What's been done to you? Victim. Hmm. Which was right there in the Akash, you know it. How many times have you been victimized? Shame and let's talk about the last time you were burned at the stake. <laughs> You're here. Listener, you're here. What does that do to you now? Make you a little hesitant, does it? To come to a channeling meeting? <laughs> it should. That's the Akash for you. In the now, there is no such thing as a past life. We've said that before. Therefore, they're all present lives. Well, let's start looking at them. What do you got? that irritates you. Things that you don't know where they're coming from. What are you trying to get over? I'll tell you, it's all in the Akash. It comes from the other side when you used to be something else. It's called residual if you want to know a name for it, but here is an irony. Seems unfair, does it not? That as you begin the journey that is a spiritual path and push on those doors, as you become interdimensional, the very things that you hoped you'd get rid of show up. And these are the things of the Akash, those things like victimization. Start to make you feel like a little less than, don't you? What about self-esteem? You ever feel like you don't have much? I'm going to give you a fact I have never said before, and I'll just tell you the way it is. Light workers in general feel beat up. They don't all have a lot of self-esteem. And there is a reason, a good reason. Self-worth is something that you've got to capture after you have pushed on the door and after you've solved these things like fear and worry and frustration and bias. Self-worth comes with knowing who you are, cleaning the light, throwing away the filters. That's where self-worth comes from because when you start this journey, all of the Akash, all of those lifetimes after lifetime come up and surface and you see who you are, what you've done, where you've been, and you don't feel worthy anymore. And there's some of you who just want to crawl in a corner and weep. Because that's what the Akash does. It shows you humanity. You don't take into account the fact that all those different consciousnesses through the ages, that you participated in so many of them, you weren't who you are now. But the feelings are there and they surface. What about the vows you took? What do you think those do to you? Think how many vows you took. Nun, priest, shaman, medicine man. You sit in these chairs, you pretended to be ordinary folks, and you're sitting there with all of those colors. I see them, I know who's here. I know what you've done and where you've been. I know what you've gone through. And yet you came back, didn't you, to sit in these chairs at the 11, 11 energy, enlightenment, enlightenment, illumination, illumination. You came for the final for the final say, this generation, the next generation, and one more will be the ones that turn the earth around and you are the forerunners. You are the ones who decided to have the indigo children, to have them as your grandkids, to teach them to be the light for them. You're the ones, you're the generation. You're the ones that came in and turned it around. You decided there wouldn't be any Armageddon. That's who you are. But you got the vows and you got the victimhood, don't you? We said it before. How do you, you want to know how to get rid of that? All of it? Right now? Why don't we just all do it together? Listen here, why don't you do it with me? You don't have to say anything out loud, just say it as a dear spirit. I am alive in the year. And then say the year. And I am here to make a change on the planet. I hereby drop all the vows that would get in the way of that, for they are belonging to another consciousness and another energy. And instead I renew my vows with the same Akash that took them originally. All of the lifetimes 
that are now under me are my support. And like a rod that we will put down through history, you will all line up. I need the help of all the consciousness and those souls who I was from the time I first came to this planet. And together, we will create a white light like the planet has never seen. How about that? And if you didn't get it, I'll tell you, you are in charge of you, Divine One. You don't have to worry about these things. You don't have to say, how? What is the procedure? Where do I start? Why don't you just do it? And watch what takes place when the boss speaks. The Divine One who is the one who is alive in 3D right now on this planet and makes the difference. You speak to your Akash and line it up. Watch what takes place. Watch what takes place with your phobias. You got them. I know you got them. We addressed that issue once in a book called The Journey Home with Michael Thomas. He was learning all about changing and what he could do with the information. He had claustrophobia. And in this story, part of his training, at the end of it, he was actually nailed into a box like a coffin. Michael Thomas's reaction to that, <laughs> he sang a song. There was no fear. There was no panic. And the only emotion he had was, I am free. And I'm going to sing about it until they open the box. You can drop all of that, you see, because so much of it is residual. Residual from past lives. That's the Akash. You have control over the Akash. And if you don't, it's a filter. Can you imagine sending a bright light to the Middle East with victimhood all over it? With vows that you took? With biases that you have? Can you imagine that? That's that box of filters to my right here. Well, some of you just cleaned that glass and the filters are gone. I know who you are. Because even though I talk metaphorically and very esoterically, there are those who are getting it. Truly getting it. They don't belong with you, Master, Precious Angel. All these things are not yours. They're just earthly things that paste upon you to see if you can recognize them and take them away. And yet some of you say, well, they're me. They're not you. You're a Master. What about this one? It's so easy to have this, and you don't even recognize it's a bias. What about expectation? <laughs> well, I'm thinking positively, and I'm sending the light, and I expect that they'll do something at the end of that light. I expect that this is going to be a peaceful light. You've just biased it. How can cosmic intelligence go on a pure light when you've already decided what it's for and what it's going to do? Part of the issue, is it not, is the ability for you to send a light that is pure and generic and free and clear of you. Only the divine part is what we're asking for. And only the divine part will then allow cosmic intelligence to go to the right place, do the right thing for the times. That's why you're here. This is a process that is well known. In the quantum hologram, it is well known. Cosmic intelligence is the definition of that energy which knows where it's going, what it's going to do, and who it's going to affect. It does not put upon any earthling, any human being, anything other than a light for them to see clearer, thereby allowing free choice wherever the light goes of the person it's affecting. And that has to do with healing, too. That's why you can't heal anybody, dear ones. Oh, you can balance them. You can tell them what's wrong. You can give them things that will help them. But they have to take them themselves, see it themselves, and work with it themselves. What about expectations? As simple as this. We're getting together and we're praying for peace on earth, really. Is that what you're going to do? Well, that's what you told us to do. Oh, no. I told you that humanity, especially those who are listening, hearing, 
and in the room could create peace on earth. That's what I said. I didn't tell you to send light with peace on earth on it, did I? No, no. Angels, you get together and you send a light that is so powerful, you don't have to touch it. In fact, to touch it and to think about it might be even something that would be, would be tainting it. No, no, no. You just want to generate the light and let the cosmic intelligence take it wherever it's going to go. And there's no bias upon it. But what you will know is that part of what you're doing will eventually create peace on earth because it knows what to do and it knows where it's going. You see? That's what the lighthouse does. Think about an earthly lighthouse. What does it do? Do you think it sends a message on the light to ships at sea? It does not. It just says, I'm here. Watch out for this rock. This is dangerous over here. I'm going to show you the way. That's all it does. I'm going to show you the way. It illuminates in the dark. That's all it does. And that's all you're supposed to do. And some of you are here and you do it so well. And you've learned all of these things and I know who's here, you see. Expectations. It's a bias, is it not? Ah, oh, the last one. Unbelief. Unbelief. Seems like an oxymoron, isn't it? crying how can you be a lighthouse and not believe <laughs> there's a lot of you on the edge of belief trying to be a lighthouse going through the steps but really really when you get out of the room you question certain things is this really, is this really true is it right is it not was that man on the stage really channeling was there an angel really coming through are these words from spirit are they from a man You want the answer to that? Standing on the stage are two figures right now that are part of the entourage that come with my partner every time he does this. I don't expect you to see him, although some can and some do, and they report it. This is real. And the message should resound in your heart and in your mind as real doesn't ask you to do anything you wouldn't want to do does it doesn't call for a conclusion doesn't give you a doctrine does it doesn't it just praise you and tell you how beautiful you are what's inside what can be done isn't that what it is doesn't it give you free choice that's the love of God at work and that's who's here I'm your partner cry on. and some of you are beginning to recognize me now who I am what I'm here for for the duration of my stay If you get rid of the disbelief, all of it, your light will become so bright. It's up to you. What is your path today? Where does it take you? What does it do? Brian, I want to know how. I told you how. So many of you want to write it. So, well, I wish you'd give us the four steps. Twelve steps. We should give us something that we can that we can handle. And I say to you, why do you want to make it so complex, human? It's between you and spirit. Why don't you just get to it? There is no manual for this. It's not in 3D. You sit and you push on that door, pure intent, God, tell me what it is I need to know. Do you feel the entourage right now asking, yeah, are you ready to do that? And you do it in various steps, you know. Even those of you who've, who've gone into what you would call ascension status, you ready to go to the next level? Do it again. Watch what happens. Do it again. Watch what happens. Because the energy is shifting and it's changing every single month. There are new tools opening. Your DNA is activated just a little more with a magnetic grid, with a crystalline grid. You have things that you didn't know you had. And they're there. Reach into the Akash and mine it for the precious things that you were and are. The abilities you need and can have now. Take away the filters. Now I see a lighthouse. Vision with me. Envision this with me, all. Oh, go here with me. You see this wonderful, beautiful lighthouse made of 
concrete if you wish because it's not going to move it's not vacillating in the wind it's sure of itself because it's in belief it knows who it is and the keeper of the light is you and you climb to the top of that stair and that is you and that light has no filters at all it's so bright and so white and you strike the light and you send it on its way and you bless it and you celebrate it. You don't know where it's going. Oh, you might give it direction, say, today I would like to, I would like to send light to the Sudanese. You know, there's so much, so much sorrow and death. Can you even imagine? As you sit here in the chairs, can you imagine? Oh. So today you say, I would direct my light in that way. That's a good call. But you say, it doesn't have to go there. Go wherever it wants to. That's what I'm thinking about today. I'm not going to send a bias. I'm not going to send expectations. I'm going to send intent. Light, go where you want to. That's my prayer today. You know how powerful this is when you do it in a group? I'll say it again. Less than one half of one percent of humanity has to wake up and do this for it to make a difference that is palatable. And you'll see it on the news. <laughs> where the earth starts to change and shift and the wisdom starts to be the norm and you'll see things happen you've never ha seen happen before and you wonder how that how they take place how they take place and you'll know that you alone with three others four others are doing the work of the planet and the reason you came and that's the truth and that's the truth it's been the crying message for these 18 years it's a nine you know it's a completed message. The message is not going to get any better than that. It doesn't have to. Some of you feel that it's tough to accomplish, and it is. But I know who's here. And I know what you can do. And that's why they call it a test, dear ones. You want the instruction manual, don't you? You leave this place and it's time. And you go out and get in your vehicles and you will. I'll say this again too. How many of you say, oh, we cannot Ooh, get away from that car? Where is the manual for this thing? I better learn all about that automatic transmission before I use it. And of course, you don't do that, do you? And the reason is because there is no question about your belief system. When you sit in the auto, it works most of the time <laughs> enough so that you won't hesitate you won't want the manual you don't care do you how it works it just works get you from here to there okay can you do this can you look at your divinity do you have enough courage to look at the love of God as being the same it just works it's gonna get you from here to there it just does you don't need the manual you don't need the steps you don't need all of these things intellectual well, you just open your heart and let it be. That's the message we have today. It'd be a good day to be healed, would it not? How about a group effort in this room? Now we're talking to those in this room. You see, there are three here. Three here who have things in their blood that they don't want. I know who's here. I know who's here. How would you like to help clean that up? Actually reverse the Akash, take them to a level if they give permission and the three of you know who you are and perhaps you right now would give permission for the rest of these angels to send you light. See, you don't know, you don't know who they are, do you? You don't have to know who they are. This is how this works. Listen to me. Right now, all of you, will you visualize light for them? Let the cosmic intelligence do its job. You just vision just light for the three of them, just light for the three of them, so that when they walk out of here, they're going to be different. It may be with their permission that their blood will be different. Return to a place before it was tainted. I know who's here. It'd be a good time to be healed. The three of you, you give permission for that. You give permission for that. You give permission for that. Because the rest of us 
are on your side is a good time for family to help family. Don't forget this moment because one of you has already been shifted and changed. One of you has already accepted it. It's underway. How about the other two? Oh, it's coming. It will. Blessed is the human being who crosses the bridge and finds the love that's there. The unsolvable is solvable. There's light where you thought there was darkness. And you can have the miracle you asked for. Master.